Anyway, that's what I've found in my experience and that's what I see in the word. God will, he will never prove himself just to the skeptic who, who is mocking and, you know, well, if you are who you say you are, come off the cross, you know. But then the, the sincere seeker and the people who just don't know, for, for them he will do signs and wonders. They're not just called miracles in the Bible, they're called signs and wonders. And they get the attention of people. And I, I think also, Randy, we're coming into a season where he's going to start doing that again. The reason that God doesn't just do that all the time, this is what I believe, okay, no, about that. I'm backing up a little bit here. I believe God always wants to save. He always wants to heal. He, he always wants to pour out his spirit. But I also believe he has to do things in this earth realm to prepare the hearts of people to receive that. And I believe that when that is compounded by the fact that he's trying to, he may be trying to do it not just for one, but for many, for culture, for country, for a region, then it takes longer for God to get the atmosphere, the hearts ready, enough prayer that's been released, repentance that has occurred. Uh, sometimes changes that need to be made among leaders and uh, even the wineskin of the church being prepared for what he wants to do. So God waits for the right time. And the, so the, the right time is not just when God gets around to it or feels like it. The right time is when the conditions are now right. Does that make sense? So I said that just to say, I believe conditions are right for this outpouring, this deluge. Conditions, <clears throat> excuse me, conditions are not right because enough people who are sinners change and because they're, they've changed, God can now do this. That's putting the cart before the horse. God doesn't come and send revival because enough bad people change. God sends revival and then bad people change. So you don't, <clears throat> excuse me again, and I didn't say that, I said that so you'll know the fact that society is still steeped in sin and rebellion and government is and people are in a, in a nation, that does not mean it can't be time an opportune time for God to begin to do this. He's not responding because sinners cleaned up their act. He's coming to clean up their act. You, you see the difference? So it is, it is not challenging to my faith to, to believe or say it's time for a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Even when I see just horrible sin and deprivation around me. Because I know that when, when the, all those conditions become right and God says, now I can do this, when he starts pouring out his revelation, Holy Spirit starts moving in, in significant ways, signs and wonders start taking place, everything starts to change. And he will then prove himself. There are people uh, by the millions. There are people in this, on this campus right over here. They've been taught all their lives that this is phony. They've been taught that Jesus isn't real. They've been taught a different religion. Or they've been taught and, and been indoctrinated with atheism. Some of those people, they are not that way just because they're bad. They're that way because that's what's been put in them. Many of them are good people, decent 
kind, just, just, just good people. The world's full of them. But they have these crazy ideas and, 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 they've, and they've been deceived. And God is going to come and demonstrate to them that he's real. Just like Randy was saying. And I didn't intend to go this direction, but I'm kind of sniffing out that trail again today that I talked about last night. You need to know for sure before you guarantee something that it's God talking. That's very unusual. But sometimes God will do that like he did with Randy and like he did with me. He will say, you tell him, I'm gonna do this. But sometimes when I feel that nudge with people, I just say, I just feel like God wants to, he wants to demonstrate you, show you he's real. Let's pray and see what he does. I pray for another lady. Now, sometimes, sometimes it's like all he needs is, is a human act or word. He really doesn't need us to be good at it. We went to a lady who, who there on another trip to Guatemala who had fallen, elderly lady, fallen off a little step stool, broke her ankle, shattered, broke, broke it several pieces. And as happens with elderly people sometimes, it just wouldn't, wasn't healing well. So six months later, her ankle is still two or three times at this normal size. She's walking with a cane and, and you know, she's, it's just troublesome. And she had recently come to, to Christ and we went to have a little Bible study with her just by herself, the other couple and Cece and I. And we just sat down over some tea and or coffee, whatever, and just were talking and just talking about the scriptures and doing a little Bible study with her. And I heard the Holy Spirit, I heard Holy Spirit clearly say, I want to heal her ankle right now. So I said, I believe God wants to heal your ankle right now. Would you mind if we prayed for you? She's a very stately woman. Her husband was an ambassador from Guatemala to other nations. Would you mind if we prayed for you? No, oh, no, she says. So I said, well, would you please put your foot up on the ottoman here? And the other couple with us, they were kind of in charge. You know, they were the elder, wiser leaders. And I said, you know, I think God wants to do this. He said, I agree. So she puts her foot up there and, and we're all just sort of, you know, around her. And he says, Dutch, pray for her. Which didn't bother me at all. I took one step toward her. And I was, so I was still probably eight feet away. Took one step toward her. Started moving my hand as though I would would when laying hands on her. So I said, Father, and when I got to there, that's all, that's as far as I got. Father, like somebody poured a bucket, buckets of water over us. The presence of God filled the room. It was so dramatic and so profound that every single one of us stopped what we were doing. We froze. This lady began to weep and we all just watched and listened. And then her foot began to on the arm. Bang, bang, bang. I mean, I mean, not just like once or twice. I mean like two or three minutes. Then she begins to just, she's weeping, and then she starts speaking in tongues. She has no idea what it is. It's just one of those times where after it's, after it's, it's over, you explain to them what's happened to her. Because when she came out, she spoke broken English. So when, when all this kind of calmed down, she could speak again. She said, I say words I don't know. <laughs> she had no idea what it was, what it was. She'd never heard of it. But... In that situation, the Lord didn't even, he didn't even really want a prayer. He just wanted somebody to say, Father. He just, he just wanted an act of obedience. He probably just wanted us to say to her, God, 
is going to do this or wants to do this. But my point to you is you don't really have to be good at it for God to use you. You just have to be available and you have to, you have to give him a chance.